Judah Mintz could be one of the best freshmen in the ACC this season, and Syracuse could be getting a haul in 23 or most likely 24. We're going to talk about all of it on Locked On Syracuse. It's right now. Our Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Matt Bonaparte and Valentine with you here on Lockdown Syracuse. We're happy to have you, uh, and thanks for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online as you cover this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Uh, it's a little bit of a recruiting roundup day uh, in terms of Syracuse basketball here on this wonderful Friday. Try to give you something to look forward to going into the weekend. Next week, we'll have more on training camp. Hopefully, we get a depth chart soon. Whenever that drops, you know that we will be breaking everything down, showing you what we like and don't like about it. Uh, but for now, it's uh, basketball recruiting time. And the first uh, morsel of information that I want to talk about uh, is that Judah Mintz has been ranked a top five ACC freshman, uh, which I'm not. I can't say I'm like totally surprised about because the dude, I mean, he's fantastic, uh, but it's just nice and a little bit refreshing to see that because this whole debacle with the 2022 class started with Dior Johnson. He committed. He was a five star. He was the best. Then he decommits. Then Kamari Lance commits. Oh, my gosh. Who cares about Dior? Kamari Lance is the guy. Uh, and adding on, you've got um, Justin Taylor, and then they get Chris Bunch. And it's like, okay, who cares about Dior Johnson? Doesn't matter anymore. And then Kamari Land says, bye, I'm leaving, which it was just painful. But, like, I won't lie, I kind of expected it. Uh, but the funny thing is, Judah Mintz shows up out of nowhere. Nobody expected him to, to come to Syracuse. He was projected uh, on the crystal ball to go to DePaul until pretty much the words came out of his mouth that he was going to Syracuse. Um, and then he uh, he rises up above both Dior and Kamari Lands on the ESPN 100. Uh, so maybe he's better than both those guys. And he's a top five ACC freshman. So it looks like Syracuse made out well. And without him, Beheim was calling this the greatest class he ever had. So there's so much to be happy about here. Yeah, Judah could be uh, this guy, right? I'm seeing, you know, some Twitter conversations about how you got to be looking out for your early NBA big boards and having Judah Mintz on that list. This is a guy that is a really, really big talent for Syracuse. And we talked about it a little bit earlier this week. Uh, it's sort of been reflected in Beheim saying that he's most likely starting at the one this season, you know, that's the foreseen future at the moment outside of something crazy happening. And I think you've got a really, really good opportunity here. If you're Syracuse to sort of reestablish yourself as a place that NBA talent can actually come through, right? You've sort of lost that, that spark where you're seeing guys come through Syracuse and being an immediate impact NBA guy. You've had some guys make it sort of up through the G leagues and have some appearances, but Maybe since Michael Carter Williams goes rookie of the year, you haven't had all too much straight from Syracuse immediate impact guys in the NBA. And Judah Mintz could be that guy. And I, I think, you know, you don't want to completely, you know, bypass the time at Syracuse, but that's huge for Syracuse recruiting to once again say to these higher, you know, caliber recruits, these higher star recruits, maybe a five star who would think about that, uh, that, hey, you can come through Syracuse and, and play a good basketball season. And once again, still be in that NBA conversation. I think Judah Mintz is that guy. I'm really excited to see what he can do. He's top 50 in terms of uh, national prospects. I think when all was said and done in the, the final composite for him, I'm excited for what he can do or the final 24 seven ranking for him. Either way, I'm excited for this guy a lot. I think he brings a lot to the table uh, and I cannot wait to start seeing a little bit more footage of him come out from uh, his time here. 
And the article that I was referencing in which he was ranked so high in terms of ACC freshman was from Jamie Shaw, who's a great Twitter follow in terms of uh, basketball recruiting uh, from on three. He ranks Derek Whitehead of Duke number one. Fine. Former Syracuse target Kyle Filipowski, who ended up going to Duke uh, number two. Fine. Uh, former Syracuse target J.J. Starling, uh, who goes to Notre Dame, third, fine, and then Judah, fourth. Um, so, okay, so this has been my take through this all, this the whole thing, Owen, and I'm, I'm excited to hear your opinion on it. But even that they're losing those guys, like, obviously, in a perfect world, Kyle Filipowski would be coming to Syracuse next season. That was the goal. Uh, that was the hope uh, in that recruiting cycle. I didn't have a whole lot of faith that it was going to happen just because the guy is so good and Duke is so good. I mean, you, you kind of got the feeling that maybe with the turnover um, in terms of Shashevsky to Shire, you'd have a chance. Uh, but no, Duke is still the recruiting power. And we're only I mean, we'll see the next couple of seasons if they continue to be uh, this season is going to be very telling, but, you know, not his guys. So we'll see which, how Shire does. Uh, but going to be a very telling year in, in terms of what comes next for Duke recruiting. But anyway, I'm just happy that Syracuse is in the mix for guys like Filipowski and Starling, who are five stars that end up top three in the ACC, let alone top five uh, in terms of incoming freshmen. I'm just happy that Syracuse actually had a chance to get them. Uh, and the fact that some people thought that there was a decent shot they'd come means that Syracuse's recruiting is on the up and up. Uh, and that they actually have a chance in the next couple of seasons to be pulling in crazy good classes. Yeah, I'm curious, and obviously we're never really going to get this answer, but in hindsight, if Dior was never in the picture and wasn't that early commit in the class of 2023 for Syracuse, uh, or 22 for Syracuse, what does that look like in terms of Syracuse's recruiting efforts for J.J. Starling? And how does that sort of change? Because I think almost that that conversation, and I'm putting words into the mind of Starling here, but I think when you see that, you know, Dior is committed and, you know, Joe is going to be there at this point, that maybe you start to look for a place where you might have a better chance at starting or being that number one guy and being that big name. And so I'm curious, you know, being a local guy, you know, how much, you know, that could have changed if, you know, Dior was never a part of the Syracuse recruiting process at all. And it was just, you know, the efforts were focused on JJ and there was nothing there. Uh, but once again, you know, he was in this conversation for a little while. Uh, it stinks to lose, you know, local talent coming through, you know, to have a Baldwinsville guy come through and end up at Notre Dame where you're going to see him once, maybe twice a year. Uh, but I like your point in that they're in these conversations. And I think you're starting to see uh, as you move forward into the class of 23 that Syracuse is you know, in these conversations and you look at the situation with JP Estrella, who you had on uh, a week or two ago at this point and pulling out from Duke and saying, you know, I want to go somewhere where I can play. And if that at the start is sort of how you're pulling these recruits out and pulling some bigger name guys that want a little more run in the immediate foreseeable future, uh, I'm okay with that uh, for Syracuse. And I think that'll help them grow and bring in a couple of more big name guys moving forward. Totally. Uh, and I, I do have to say as well that I think I'm less upset about um, losing out on Kamari Lands, excuse me, from J.J. Starling uh, than other people are just because, yes, he's a Baldwinsville guy. Uh, and he's like a lot of people took that immediately as, oh, he's in their backyard. They have to get him. But the kid went to high school at Lollumare High School in Indiana. Like he went to a Notre Dame prep, basically. Uh, so like, I don't know. I, I've seen to me, like the writing was on the wall that he was going to Notre Dame. So that really, that one backyard stink. to another. Yeah. It was like, okay. Like it would be different. Like um, if he was from South bend, but then went to high school at like CNS, like, okay, then maybe like that, that makes like the whole difference of like, all right, they have to get this kid. But like he went to high school there. Like, of course he was going to go there. Um, the other thing that's interesting about this whole debacle is that Kamari lands, Basically, like, I don't want to say recruited, but I felt like Justin Taylor came to Syracuse because, or at least part of why he came to Syracuse was because Kamari Lance was here uh, and he wanted to build something, which is why I and a lot of other people, I think, 
are high on Justin Taylor because I, I think he really wants to build something in Syracuse, and I think uh, that he has a chance to go down as one of the best fan favorites just because he has the chance to be remembered as the guy who wanted to win over everything else because he's been like that through the recruiting process. He wants to come to Syracuse and win. He doesn't want to come to Syracuse uh, – and futz around and just get onto the NBA. He wants to win. Uh, yeah. Obviously, everybody wants to get to the NBA. That's the goal. But why can't you win on the way? Uh, so I'm I'm high on Justin Taylor going in uh, to the season, but uh, only time will tell. It almost felt like go. the uh, you know what you see almost in the NBA, where you're you're talking a lot with you know so and so and whoever to come in and build this Start team, throwing down tampering fines. Yeah, it seems like he was <laughs> almost uh, the facilitator. Uh, looking around for, you know, who can you bring in? Who wants to come here? Who can we, you know, sort of build around and bring in a handful of guys that are all going to contribute and and work towards, you know, winning and actually trying to go out and compete and doing something at a big stage. Uh, I think that is incredibly huge for Syracuse, incredibly reputable. You sort of look at the tiers that sort of, or the dominoes that fell into place once he committed and, and starting to, you know, pitch to whoever, and, come on, let's do this. We're building something. And now you got what Bayheim calls his best class ever, plus Judah Mintz. Uh, yeah. I think if this works out, which I have a, I have reasonable faith for it to work out. Uh, I think you can go back and, and sort of circle him as one of those sort of catalysts that helped it do. Sure. Uh, all right. Let's take a quick break. I'll tell you about where you can place some bets. Go to betonline.net. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in game betting scores and podcasts. They've got you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. And thanks for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen every day. The ultimate college football preview is here. A seven-episode preview with college experts, local team experts, and Odyssey College Football Insiders is everything you need to be ready for the college football season in one spot. Search for Ultimate College Football Preview on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Matt Bonaparte, Owen Valentine, back with you here on Locked on Syracuse. We're talking... Uh, a little bit recruiting roundup here on the Friday episode. So we talked about Judah Mintz. He's going to be the man. Uh, maybe their first uh, one and done since, what is it, Malachi Richardson six years ago, who should have stayed. Um, let's talk about the future guys even more far in the future, I guess. Uh, you've got a 2023 potential class that uh, you already knew you had J.P. Estrella potentially coming in. His uh, commitment date is September 2nd, doing it over in Saco, Maine. Um, and then you also knew that Syracuse was high on Reed Ducharme, uh, who's a four-star. Him and uh, J.P. going to the same high school this year at Brewster Academy, so that's kind of exciting. Maybe teammates in high school, teammates in college. Uh, that would be cool. Ducharme has a top three right now of Penn State, Syracuse, and Xavier. I said this to Brad. I'll say it to you as well, Owen. Weirdest top three I've, I think I've ever seen. Uh, Syracuse, <laughs> Penn State, and Xavier? Like, what? Um, yeah. But okay. It seems to me like Syracuse is by far the best program out of those three. I know Xavier's been good recently, not this past couple of seasons, but a little bit uh, before. But what does Penn State have that Syracuse doesn't? Whatever. I'm on a tangent. Uh, but the new guy who it looks like Syracuse has just made the top five of, according to 24-7, is Mike Williams. Uh, he has Clemson, DePaul, LSU, Syracuse, and Wake Forest, uh, who are all in on him pretty highly on 24-7. Mike Williams, a point guard. He's 6'2", 175 pounds. Call him a four-star. He's 133rd ranked in the nation, 18th ranked point guard, but the number one recruit out of Maryland goes to Calvert Hall College in Towson, Maryland. Uh, could be a big recruit for Syracuse, but same thing I've been saying. Another point guard, and it looks like they're trying to get point guards because maybe they're banking on Judah being a one-and-done, and if you lose Samir Joe 
and Judah, then you just have Quadir Copeland. That's all you've got in terms of a guy who can play point guard. I'm not calling Joe Girard a point guard. I'm just saying he played point guard for three seasons. He could play, he could play point guard. Um, so you just have Quadir Copeland. So it kind of does make sense. And you probably want one more anyway because you're going to lose two guys. So it totally makes sense that they'd want some guy. Um, and Mike Williams might be that guy. Yeah, he continues to, uh, you know, sort of put – new offers onto his Twitter. So I, I'm not exactly sure what this is. We're on 24 seven right now where Syracuse is linked as warm with, uh, with four other schools. So I'm not positive if this is his official top five, but it seems like, you know, there's five schools on here that are, you know, queued in as warm. So we'll call it the top five for now. Um, this is a guy that right now, uh, from what I'm reading sort of seems like, a combo guard that's in the works to becoming a true point guard, uh, working to shift that because I think his height is going to be, you know, a, a relative factor in, you know, him being able to shift and benefiting from a shift to a point guard. Uh, if he can develop the skill set to pull that off, uh, I think that'd be a little bit better of a fit for him. And it's sort of the transition that he's going through now. Uh, seems like from what I'm reading to, he's a good two way player. Uh, can defend, can score through contact, which I think are all going to be valuable things. Uh, I'm curious to see where this goes. My sort of standing with him right now is he's, what, 133 in the composite. This is a supplementary guy in a recruiting class. Um, I, I think it would be huge for Syracuse to get him with a couple of others uh, that are better than him. Uh, no offense to him, you know, but at 133, uh, with the way you want things to go recruiting wise, the way you want to build off this 2022 recruiting class, if you're Syracuse, you're going to need a couple of names better than him, or you're going to need Mike Williams to continue to climb uh, and become a bigger prospect than maybe he is at this exact moment. Um, I, I'd i be excited to see you know Syracuse make a top three, continue to look at him and, and bring him in, because as you were saying, we don't know what happens with Joe. We don't know what happens with Judah. So you're going to need... Uh, some guard play if you're Syracuse. And right now, you know, your two biggest potential guys are Reed Ducharme, who is, you know, a three probably, and J.P. Estrella, who's a four or a five. Uh, so you do need to look to bring in some ball handling, some guards. Uh, I'd be excited to see sort of where his senior season goes uh, at Calvert Hall and, and sort of see what goes on with that, because this could be a guy that if Syracuse continues to stay in the conversation, you know, could be uh, a key to helping to, you know, bridge uh, a couple of losses in the guard game if you're Syracuse. Also a guy that I don't know about you, but like I didn't think Syracuse had a great shot at. Um, I'm also kind of surprised that from what we know of their offer list, it's Aiden Holloway who already committed to Auburn and it's Mike Williams. Like they haven't offered yeah. another point guard. They offered a shooting guard, Blue Kane, but he committed to Georgia Tech. So it's He's kind the of only Mike Williams guard. bust right now. Well, yeah. you also have the combo guards of DJ Wagner and Elijah Gertrude, but DJ Wagner is the number one guy in the country, uh, and he's probably going either to Kentucky or Louisville. So that don't don't hold your breath on him. Uh, and Elijah Gertrude, it doesn't look like he's kind of made a decision, but it does look like Syracuse might be out of the picture. Because his similar 24-7-ish top five, maybe not official top five, uh, but the teams that are, quote, warm on him are Virginia, Kansas, Rutgers, Seton Hall, and St. John's. Uh, so I wouldn't hold your breath on him either. Um, so Syracuse kind of banking on Mike Williams, it seems. Yeah. But if they don't get him, like, if they don't get him and – what I said happens where you lose Gerard, Symir, and Judah, and you just have Quadir Copeland left. Like, what's going to happen? They're just going to have to scramble for a guy. Yeah. I also, so, you know, I, I look at this, and we're, what, two weeks, two and a half weeks from, from J.P. Estrella's announcing date, right, in early September. Yeah. I'm curious sort of how things fall into place, uh, you know, in the two sort of options that you have for Syracuse. I think, you know, it's very, there's a very good chance that he comes to Syracuse and commits to Syracuse in three weeks, two weeks, whatever it is. Uh, and then, you know, the pieces can start to fall, you know, he's playing with Reed this year. 
uh, they're good friends. He was talking about how in the recruiting pitch, you know, Reed was mentioned and how they had plans for the two of them to work together and do things together. So I'm really curious how sort of things fall into place if that happens with JP and he says he's coming to Syracuse and you get that commitment also versus, you know, how things change if it doesn't go in Syracuse's favor with regards to JP, maybe he goes to Iowa, maybe he goes to Tennessee. Uh, how do they sort of adjust in that regard? Because as we look through, as you were saying, we look through this list and, you know, you don't need a gigantic class by any means following the number of guys you brought in this year, but you're going to need two, three, four players to come in. And right now it looks like Mike Williams is a possibility. We don't really know the likelihood with him. Reed is warm, could be a guy that could come here. JP, I think is, I would, uh, you know, maybe I'm playing favorites, but I would probably put my money if I had to pick a team that Syracuse might be that spot. But You're outside of those JP, three, I love that from you. Yeah, I'll take JP. I, I bet JP. Uh, I but outside JP of that, I mean, you've got committed players. You've got uh, Montas, who went pro. Uh, and then you've got guys that are incredibly cool on Syracuse at this point. So if JP does not fall into place for Syracuse, they're going to, in my eyes, be a lot of changes that happen and maybe some offers and some new efforts that – will start to emerge on this sort of list of players that Syracuse is looking at. Uh, so the dominoes are going to fall one way or the other uh, with regards to JP's decision in probably, what, 15 days at this point. I will say, keep this in mind. Um, in terms of the 2024 class, Syracuse has offered the number one point guard, which is Elliot Cadeau. Uh, he has offers from Louisville, Georgetown, Baylor, Texas Tech, um, pretty much everybody you got Brad and I always used to say that if you don't have an offer from Siena and UMass, you're not a real player. So he's got both those. Um, <laughs> he's also got St. John's, Tennessee, TCU, Providence, Seton Hall. So everybody's in on this kid, UNC. Um, but if imagine Syracuse pulls that out, that would be pretty nuts. Um, Fine. and then you wouldn't I'll really have a, a huge Syracuse. You wouldn't have a huge point guard problem, but you probably would for one year. If that happens, you have one for one season. Um, you just have Quadir Copeland out there. Yeah, I, I, mean, I would let that happen. In case he comes back. I'd bring him <laughs> in for a year. Fine. Yeah, that would be cool. Twist my um, but anyway, uh, so the top three guys right now that you're looking at for Syracuse basketball are J.P. Estrella, Reed Ducharme, and Mike Williams. By the way, if you're wondering, Mike Williams is not the son of Mo Williams. Uh, I did some research for you. He's not. Oh, there, it, Mo Williams' son is named Mike, but Mo Williams' son is currently in ninth grade. Okay. So, you know, it's not him. Maybe um, another two years from now. Yeah, maybe. All right. Well, that's all we got today on Locked On Syracuse. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Go get more on the ACC by making Locked On ACC your second listen every day. Host Candace Cooper and the local experts of Locked On take you across the ACC in 30 minutes. Take Locked On ACC, your second listen that is Locked On ACC. Owen and I will see you on Monday. We will have an interview with Stephen Bailey for you at some point next week to continue to break down the depth charts and uh, what he sees and whatnot. We have a lot of questions, uh, so look out for that next week. Uh, see ya.